Welcome back to the Dr. Jonette channel. We are outside and I am getting ready to plant my dahlia tubers in the ground. These boxes are all full of dahlia tubers that I dug up last fall, wrapped them up in towels, labeled them, and put them in the boxes. The boxes have been in the winter, over winter, over the winter, the boxes have been in my basement, in the garage actually. It's unheated, it's a cool, dark, perfect place to store dahlia tubers. And now that it's spring, the flowers are blooming, it's time to get them in the ground so that they can get growing and give me beautiful dahlias throughout this summer into the fall, clear up until frost. Last fall, when I dug these dahlia tubers, I dug them because in New York, it's too cold for dahlias to survive in the ground throughout the winter. You might live in an area where the ground doesn't freeze, and if that's the case, you can leave your dahlia tubers in the ground. But I always take them out of the ground to make sure that they don't freeze, turn into mush, and that I will have beautiful dahlias year after year. Once you purchase a dahlia tuber, it's a tiny little tuber, but over the course of that first year, it makes gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you will see how big some of my clumps of dahlias are, especially if you go to my website. I've got pictures there of these massive clumps of dahlia tubers. If this information was informative so far, Thank you for ringing that notification bell. Let's take these tubers out and get them planted. I'm going to show you how in this video to step by step how to plant them, how to fertilize them, and how to make them into beautiful tall plants that are over six feet tall. So make sure you watch all the way to the end because you aren't going to want to miss any of the steps for how to grow beautiful flourishing dahlias. I have here, Farmer Fred went and got a big scoop full of my organic fertilizer. People ask me, what do you use for organic fertilizer? I don't purchase organic fertilizer. You can purchase it and there's a number of different varieties of organic fertilizer out there that you can purchase. I don't purchase any of it. I produce my own organic fertilizer. It's called compost. This is all organic material that has been composted over the last probably how many years, Fred, does it take to get to this point? Probably four or five. Four or five years. It takes about four or five years and I have large po piles of organic material in my, on my property that I comp we compost and use in place of purchasing fertilizer. I don't like to add chemicals, even if they're organic fertilizer chemicals, to my gardens, especially my vegetables and my flowers. So this is what we use for our organic fertilizer. I also have here one of my dahlias. You can see when I unwrap these dahlias that some of them have shoots on them that over the winter they begin to sprout and here's a sprout here there's some sprouts down here on this one and this one here so when i plant them in the ground i am going to plant them so that the tubers are buried but some of the shoots may still be sticking out which is fine the other thing you want to do when you open up your dahlias in the spring is take off any damaged or rotten tubers that you don't want to put in the ground for example this one here has a tuber that's all dried out and it's not going to grow when I put it in the ground you can see it's just kind of papery it's going to just rot so I taking that off and I'll just discard that and I just check my different plants for any type of thing that I want to take off this one here when I turn it over I see some here's one that's cut I'll take that one off 
one and just kind of check them to make sure that what's there, there's some weeds that were on it from last fall that I got put into storage, take off and just check. Here's some areas here that looks like uh, some, there's one that's almost off. I'll take that off and discard it take some more of the dirt off of this one, give it a little shake, anything that comes off is broken. Here's another broken one that's I'm going to discard. And uh, now I've got a healthy, nice looking dahlia tuber that I'm going to plant in the ground. You could, I could break this into two sections or actually into multiple sections if I wanted to, but I have so many of them. You saw all those boxes. I have so many of them that I'm going to just plant this whole tuber just like this. So let's go out to the garden and I'll show you how I plant my tubers. Every year I put stakes around my dahlia plants because by the end of the summer these plants will be above these stakes. That's how tall they grow. They grow taller than me, like about six feet tall. and they need something to, to support them. The other thing that the stakes do is they mark where the dahlias are. So in the spring when I plant them, I know number one, where to plant them. And if something happens to dig them up, a possum, a skunk, or even the neighbor's dog, I now know where to put them back. I use the same spot pretty much from year to year. After about three or four years, I will change the spot by maybe moving it over six inches to a foot to give the ground a rest where it was. But by using so much of our organic material, I am giving them lots of extra nutrition every year when I plant them. The other thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of people ask, how do you have so much organic material to compost? And what we have done is we've connected up with a number of the people that are in the area that take down trees and remove trees and branches and things like that. They grind up that wood into wood chips. We use those wood chips, as you can see, here on all of our gardens. You can see how built up this particular garden is as a result of the wood chips all the way from up here clear down to the grass is pure rotted down wood chips organic material so it makes it really easy to dig and plant and at, put things in the ground so when I add my dahlias to the hole I give them a nice scoop of compost or organic material from the bucket there. But you can see what I'm digging out of this hole looks very similar to what is actually in the bucket. I'm going to take this one right here and plant it right in the hole. And it's just, just soft. You can just dig it up with your hands. It's so nice and soft. And I'll put this scoop aside because I want in the hole a new scoop of the freshly composted material here because it still has all of the nutrients, all of that a plant needs. And I'll give it a couple of good scoops of this material. Then I pat it around. You can see there the tops of the tubers are still sticking out, the stems, but the tubers themselves are pretty much covered up. And then I will add to make sure everything gets covered 
that material I took out of the hole. So it's on top, whereas down where all the tubers are is that good, healthy, nutritious, organic fertilizer that I just added to the hole. And there we have it. Thank you for watching and clicking that like button as well as subscribing. Go to my website, growwithdrjonette.com to read my blog on with the step-by-step -step process that you just saw here in the video and also explore the other tabs for my garden to table ideas, recipes, tips. I have gardening tips like you just saw here as well as recipes of where I cook all of the things that I grow in my garden. I also have a health section where you will see my six pillars for health and longevity. One of my pillars is exercise and this is a great way, gardening is a great way to get exercise. We'll see you next time on the Dr. Jonette channel. And again, thank you for clicking that like button, ringing the notification bell, and signing up as a subscriber.